Good evening. As we know, we are building data centers that never sleep and that too on a power grid that still blinks. We keep saying we're ready. The, well, the reality looks more like a collision course. Plugging 21st century AI into 20th century infrastructure. You know, it is amazing, absolutely it is, that India's digital economy is scaling at breakneck speed. Cloud computing, AI workloads, digital public infrastructure, and all of it runs on data centers. These servers are hungry. They already consume one gigawatt of power. That actually amounts to an entire city like Indore or Jaipur's power consumption at peak hours. Data centers don't behave like normal consumers. They run 24 by 7 at massive scale with zero tolerance for failure. Half of their energy goes into computing, another quarter into cooling. And when the grid stumbles, they don't just shut down, they actually switch to diesel. So while we talk about green AI, the ground reality is often black smoke. Renewables aren't yet available round the clock. Diesel is expensive and dirty. And now even nuclear power is back in the conversation. The real question is actually this. Can India power its data center boom without breaking its grid, spooking investors or blowing its climate goals? And giving us a very deep insight on this is Smruti Nadig, our very own brilliant tech journalist who has covered this in her recent AIM article. Welcome to the show as always, Smruti, a pleasure to have you with us. Thank you. I'm glad to be here. Wonderful. So let's start with the myth first. Let's kind of debunk the myth, the cheap power myth at that, Smruti. India is sold as a low-cost data center hub. Your data puts annual power costs at about, well, $89 million here versus $261 million in the United Kingdom. But if operators still rely on diesel, Smruti, at about, let's say, $0.28 cents a unit because the grid is unreliable, is this cost advantage real or, well, largely an illusion? So when compared to our other counterparts in Germany, US and the UK, it is real, mm. but very fragile and increasingly very conditional. Also, diesel is not meant to run continuously, yet yeah. in locations with poor grid reliability or weak transmission, it can uh, account for meaningful share of uh, consumption, especially during power outages, voltage fluctuations, peak shortages. But every mm. hour on diesel erodes cost gap with markets like in the UK. Like you mentioned, uh, Diesel generators cost about 0.28 dollars uh, per kilowatt hour, but at, in contrast, it's completely uh, reduced amount for renewables, especially around the clock uh, renewable costs between 0.1 and 0.11 dollars. So data centers in India are generally low cost because of their cheaper grid power, lower land and construction costs, affordable skilled okay. labor, and many state incentives. So the advantage holds in regions with reliable grids and access to renewables. Elsewhere, the diesel dependence and infrastructure can erode the cost gap very easily. But we mm. tend to use diesel a lot more because the reliability is lesser in other tier two, tier three cities. And but when in comparison, if we use renewable uh, power, annual cost could drop down to 80 to 85 million dollars yeah. when compared to 110 to 118 uh, uh, under uh, RTC third party. So that is a cost advantage, but uh, we also have to look at poor grid reliability throughout the country. Okay, so before I move on to the grid aspect, as you just mentioned, Smriti, I, I just wanted uh, for you to maybe, uh, you know, shed some light on the report that you had cited in the article, the, I believe, the, uh, the report that uh, talked about the cost factor. When you mentioned, uh, I wanted uh, to draw your attention to the fact that when we mentioned that India's cost, generally speaking, power cost mm -hmm. is lower than, for example, the United Kingdom or Germany, or United States probably, right? Yeah. Why is that? If you could just very quickly uh, uh, talk us through that. It will just give us context. No, like I mentioned, the uh, 
compared to these uh, renewable costs in india are cheaper there's cheaper grid power the land procurement in india construction costs are cheaper so all in all the electricity cost comes down and we also have lower tariffs uh, here uh, compared to other countries so ha fair it comes okay. together that way. okay and the report uh, uh, aspect uh, that that you had cited in the in the article the tata shila uh, report Uh, uh what does it have to say as far as the myth is uh, concerned was it, was it anything specific that they kind of tried to unearth uh, purely from the report point of view mm-hmm. from uh, not just the, the takshashila report but many other data center reports reveal one thing is that renewable costs are lower than diesel but diesel helps during power outages voltage fluctuation so we increasingly use diesel it can't necessarily run throughout uh it needs to run it's in like segments it's like a bandaid solution correct me if i'm wrong yes. smruti yeah. yes it's a bandaid solution but also for fossil fuels it's cheaper in india so it makes the larger market for data center energy consumption fair enough which now of course brings me to the uh, the turf war uh we describe mm-hmm. a trade off between state grids for proximity and the central grid for reliability smruti for hyperscalers looking at states like uttar pradesh or for example west bengal mm-hmm. does weak renewable access effectively push them onto the central grid and does that actually solve the latency issue so definitely for uttar pradesh india central grid offers greater redundancy and access to larger renewable projects that many state grids cannot match as of yet they mm. in comparison central grids also are more reliable higher quality electricity yeah. they are supported yeah. they can be supported by integrated solar and wind projects uh, and better transmission uh, infrastructure so all in all central grids can be cost effective and keep the energy prices relatively low uh, which in turn could be uh, stable high capacity power but for some states like karnataka maharashtra and uh, tamil nadu they the, they have higher renewable uh, penetration so Right. what players like yota who have large data centers in india uh, say is that they don't really care about the cost effectiveness they generally tend to use uh, state grids because they care more about the reliability and proximity sure. more than costs and and uh, addressing the latency factor majorly that is where yeah. the crux of the conversation is as far as they are concerned they are more interested in yeah. that bit Yeah, yeah even for latency central grid hubs are better uh, they deliver mm-hmm. more reliable uh, and higher quality electricity uh, mm-hmm. but for some states that i mentioned uh, it's easier for larger players to you know Agreed. use state grids fair the nuclear pivot that particular conversation is again back on the table smriti given the fact mm-hmm. that bandaid solutions like diesel the you know lack of maybe renewable energy so big tech players like amazon google and microsoft are moving toward nuclear as we know and smrs instead of waiting for well batteries but with india's nuclear capacity which is at this given point in time at 8.8 gigawatts is this a realistic near term solution or are we just uh, still very far away from that dream becoming a reality so i believe we're still a decade away from actually using nuclear power for data center energy uh, consumption there are many constraints such as scale um even if all the planned reactors come online on schedule there are many other incremental costs and they are not going to be fast enough for the uh, data center demand in the in the closer years right now they also have long build timelines they take up to about 8 to 12 years from approval to commissioning in india land acquisition regulation financing uh, etc we also talk about small modular uh, reactors they are often cited as solutions but they are not ready yet they are not being commercially right. deployed in india there are many reforms or policies like the shanti act which are quite necessary but deployment is still years away so in reality i think it will at least take 5 to 7 years uh, for nuclear power to come into the picture uh, formally but until then data centers will have to rely on uh, grid power uh, renewables storage and gas or diesel sure. but not nuclear at the moment but before of course i ask you in terms of what the impact on the climate will be i very quickly have to mm-hmm. ask you if you remember i had done a debunked with supreet and uh, yeah. supreet uh, had very clearly mentioned that you know the 
data centers uh, required in our country definitely is there. There is no question mm-hmm. about. There is no doubt, right? Because yeah. the usage, Smriti, is huge. For example, I I still remember from uh, from that conversation he had mentioned like for uh, Chat GPT, it is free now, right? For a mm-hmm. year, perplexity is free yeah. now for a year. So do you feel that okay, great? Uh, people are talking about uh, establishing data centers. For example, Google uh, talking about Vizag. uh the jamnagar facility coming up so yes those are all there which is nice and mm-hmm. needs to be applauded but this aspect which is the ana uh, which is the auxiliary aspect which needs to back all of that up as you just mentioned mm-hmm. that we are a decade away as far as nuclear is concerned and yeah. renewables and and uh, fossil fuels are what we are relying on what's your take mm-hmm. on that because the boom is definitely there and we re- definitely need to ride the wave so the boom is there and it's only going to increase uh, right yeah. now i think in 2024 the data center market ge- generated around 9.17 uh, billion dollars and compared right. to what it might reach in 2030 it's going to be about 22 billion dollars so it, it is going to be uh, difficult if we don't bring in renewable aspect in the picture there are uh, Yota NDT have committed to having at least seventy percent of their uh, energy share as renewables. So that is something that we need to focus on more. Uh, we have cities like Mangalore coming up. We have Vizag. We have Hyderabad. We have Chennai that can build hyperscaler. facilities um, sure. with the help of uh, bigger giants international giants but even though it's lower cost i feel like we, we can go lower than the diesel cost and target using renewable uh, power more than nuclear power also at this moment because nuclear like i said is going to be a little further away so we need to figure out how to yeah. scale ai with renewables instead of fossil fuels Yeah, I mean, and and that's a very valid, fair, incisive point you've made, Smriti. Being the expert, I mean, you uh, feel that the thrust definitely should uh, should be towards renewables, which actually automatically brings me to the climate question. Uh, yeah. We're looking at cooling alone consumes about twenty five percent of a data center's energy and puts pressure on water stressed regions. So, are yeah. policies like let's say the carbon credit trading scheme actually mm-hmm. forcing accountability yet? or smriti is the sector still largely unregulated it is very largely unregulated still and not just in the data center market in the energy market also uh, offsets are never enough mm. since the rtc renewable power which is the round the clock renewable power is not still widely used and available in india the next best option would be procuring energy renewable energy certificates mm. um experts have argued that data center should be mandated to meet at least one third of their total energy demand through these rtc renewable power uh, mm. procured via open access or captive arrangements bringing data centers under the india's uh, carbon credit trader trading scheme would also push system systematic investment in both renewable energy and also efficiency of this uh, renewable energy right. like you mentioned we have we use about 0.84% of india's total energy consumption mm. uh, through data mm. centers but that's going to rise because we have a lot of ai, AI startups yeah. coming up lot of investments coming up so Hmm. India, while it uses electricity for compute alone, twenty-five percent of it, uh, we need to focus on uh, actually using renewable power because we have abundance of solar and water energy uh, that can have joint pro- uh, projects from all of these infrastructure companies to work under one grid itself. Fair point, Smriti. Before we we conclude today, I have to ask you this personally. <laughs> uh as far as you being the expert is concerned uh we really enjoyed your article by the way i have to say that uh it was very well researched and it uh, was very very extensive if for example a policy maker is watching right now maybe mm-hmm. it's not just an example maybe somebody is actually watching right now what would you like to say to them smriti personally what would you like to say to them on this I mean to begin with we need a reliable grid infrastructure where power outages and voltage fluctuations are not an issue so that edge locations tier 2 tier 3 locations can come up uh because they will also provide latency with regards to the renewable power that is available in those cities uh we need faster approvals for larger power users we need access 
predictable open access and renewable procurement rules. So this not only must align with energy digital uh, policies, but it has to align with our climate policies also. We can't keep pushing our net zero targets from 2030 to 2050 to 2070, and then maybe you know later than that. We have to ensure that we push for clean power and efficiency mm -hmm. standards while also planning transmission storage generation around these emerging data center hubs. Until now, it was not a big conversation. But since the AI boom has happened in the last few years in India, AI intensive workload is also a lot more. AI native workload is a lot more than our regular uh, data centers. Like you mentioned, people are using chat, GPT, perplexity, other AI tools a lot more. So sure, we need yeah. to keep, yeah, we need to keep in mind that we can't have these bottlenecks, you know, that could cause the blunt of the advantage that India has here and, you know, not give us a slower digital growth. Very well said. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there, there you have it. Smriti, uh, who of course uh, has done a wonderful article on this. Uh, it tries to cover it from a holistic point of view. And I believe I agree with her when she said finally that it is about making sure that our alignment is absolutely in tune with what we are wanting to achieve globally and not find ourselves in an embarrassing situation where we are saying, all right, wait a minute, we want all the investments, there is an AI boom, we want to ride the wave. But at the same given point in time, we need to make sure that we are backing it all the way. Well, ladies and gentlemen, that was, of course, front page. Like, share, subscribe. And always remember, think AI, think renewables, Think I am.